Hello everyone. Today I figured I'd do another model review of the Yamaha YZF-R1 <clears throat> from Terra Racing. And let's have a look at the box art. This is actual picture of the model itself. Sorry, the bike itself, not the model. Look at all sides here. And there it shows you the Yamaha YZF R1 Terra Racing uh, 1 tel 112 scale motorcycle series number 74. Uh, highly detailed water cooled dual overhead cam four cylinder engine uh, solid rubber like tires with exact tread pattern at the steerable front fork and realistic brake and ignition lines uh, let's just see how true that is flip it over here let's pop the lid and see what we got going on inside the box on the Tamiya packaging pull all that out And we'll set off everything off to the side for now. Instruction booklet. It even comes with the windshield film. I don't know if it shows up reflective there. And our decals. So let's just check that over to the side. You got your normal parts bag goodies of the tires, screws, your infamous to me a red screwdriver, and rubber lines which are supposed to indicate the realistic brake lines and such. Uh, I do like the tires. The tires have uh, actual cut in tread pattern on them. Very nice and as far as the uh, center line mold that uh, runs down the tire is uh, pretty nice itself. Let's uh, open this up and give you a better view of those tires because they're actually pretty nice. Make sure we set all our goodies back in the bag for now. Maybe we don't lose them. Comes with two different size uh, lines, which is pretty nice. So let's have a look at the treads. As you can see, they're pretty realistic. And that center line running down the center of the tire will buff out nicely. So let's uh, get back into the kit itself. Throw those back in the parts bag. Like I say, keeps everything together and out of the way because you don't want to be losing the screws. <clears throat> There's to me a uh, staples. You all know how much I hate those. I think I described it in the last video that I absolutely hate the staples. And let's have a quick look at the decals. Really nice. Nice and thin so they'll lay down and contour properly, especially for this carbon fiber look. Uh, that's for the back fender. And if these decals weren't thin as they are, they'd have a really hard time conforming. And here we have a film that goes over the windshield. So have a look at that. Coming up here. So, like as always, let's protect your decals until you need them. So, we'll put them back in the bag. And off they go into the bottom of the box. So, here I was talking about that window film, it's a UV filter sticker. And you cut it to size to go around the windshield as it shows here and here you got some deco placement so 
So <clears throat> let's get into the useless information of the model. But for me, I always find it quite interesting, the write-ups that they put. So here it goes. It is commonly held that long-distance touring is only for massive high-displacement motorcycles. At the Milan show in September of 1997, Yamaha shattered this myth with its YZFR1, targeting high-speed turning on a winding road. It has been constructed with a compact design with a 400cc bike. Adopting a short wheelbase and an EXUP exhaust system unique to Yamaha. It's 998cc 4-stroke four 4-cylinder four 5-valve dual overhead cam engine pumps out 150 horsepower of maximum power. The YZFR1 has drawn worldwide attention with its ability to nimbly round turn after turn at breathtaking speeds. In response to this high performance, a wide variety of parts have been put on the market to make this ride even more thrilling. Terra Racing, represented by former All Japan 500cc champion Tarahiko Terra, put forth an abundance of these parts for use with the R1. Terra became the champion in the 350cc International A Class of 1980. But he did not stop there, riding the Yamaha YZR. Terra challenged the 500cc class of the All Japan Road Race Championship and won for three years straight. Furthermore, he participated in the World Championship 250cc class throughout 1996, winning the final event, the San Marino GP. Starting with a titanium muffler for more power at moderate speeds, a curved carbon fender over the rear tire and aluminum sprockets, Terry Racing has released abundant parts in the pursuit of riding. Excellent. I have seen these bikes. I have seen these bikes personally and they are one nice ride. Let's get into the instructions. Uh, call outs for paints as usual. Tools and supplies you're going to need. And to me instructions as always <clears throat> have an excellent uh, detail and uh, as far as putting everything together it's easily makes it easily able to find parts on the parts trees because you can look at this and there you look at the number and bang you know you got it so here we start off with the motor and the bike stand and then there's a last review I did of a Yamaha you didn't do the stand till like step 10 which I always think you should do stand in step 1 and then we move on to the cylinder heads and the tubing that's in the kit. Uh, the tubing, uh, what is nice about to me and their tubing is that here you can see they give you the actual lengths that you're supposed to cut the tubing and it shows you whether it's fatter tubing or the skinnier tubing. It's a 9mm uh, length, 17mm length and it says thick vinyl tubing. And then we move on from the cylinder heads to the carburetors. And it's got the paint call outs for them. Attach it on top. Once again, thick vinyl tubing. Cut it. All the call outs for the paint codes are here. Easily referenced here. So it's always a good idea when you're going to start one of these models is to open up the instructions first. Find out what colors you're going to need and grab them from your local hobby store or eBay or whatever you use. Uh, here we have the rear fender. Moving on to frame assembly. Uh, attaching the engine into the frame with the screws. Here's your rear fender and it shows at that time painting but I does kit, excuse me, the kit does include that carbon fiber rear decal if you do not want to paint it as seen here. Uh, the rear damper with their famous spring and everything there. Uh, to me it does a great job with their sprocket and chain assembly because the way it feeds in is they just put a cut in the chain and bang it feeds onto the sprocket and then onto the bike itself. Here we see rear wheel assembly and we move on to the rear swing arm 
And so it's, uh, here we go into the thin vinyl tubing and once again they have the call out for the exact length. You just put your tubing down and give it a cut at the exact length there and shows you where to attach it. And we move on to the exhaust system. I'm putting it on the bike and then the front radiator, fan, etc. Uh, tubing which attaches to the radiator so you got to make sure you do that. They have little nubs on the radiator that you would attach to and uh, makes it easy assembly. And then the front tire, the front fork assembly, front fender, uh, moving on to the handles, handlebar, uh, tubing where it connects. Here's your tubing that you're going to have to cut again. And the tubing as it goes into the main assembly as you attach the fork assembly to the frame. And here we have the driver's head display and more cutting of vinyl tubing uh, the seat cowl and the gas tank going together uh, you can put a tandem seat on it or just a racing single seat and our last but not least finishing up assembly front headlight buckets and front headlights the mirrors and then we start to put the cowling in uh, don't forget to put that UV sticker on before you glue it and the rest of the front cowling, front mirrors uh, attaching and of course because this is a street bike uh, you've actually got the turn signals uh, that are going to attach to the bike as well and lastly but not least we put the side fairings on and the, the seat and we'll also put turn signal indicators up at the front so that's it for the instructions. Once again, to me, instructions always uh, very easy to follow. It is a highly detailed kit, these motorcycles, but they are very easy to put together. And here we have screw with the cowlings on as you can see the rivets and the panel line are nice you see mold uh, discoloration but there's no uh, evidence once you paint it that you're gonna have any issues with that I don't see any flash on any of these parts uh, so when you go to paint them they're going to be absolutely Phenomenal. Moving on to the next parts bag. Should just cut these open. I don't know why I'm not. I have staples and everything all over my desk. The next sprue has the rear fender. Sorry, front fender. Uh, the exhaust system. Uh, chain and sprocket. Flip it over the other side. Chain uh, is absolutely flawless. And this one, it doesn't have the cut, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes together. And our next bag. most likely frame pieces just might as well have pulled it out with the staples so here you have the frame pieces uh, you don't have to paint them you just go together as is uh, front forks you are gonna have to paint of course and uh, brake calipers when they go together you've got your headlight buckets uh, gas cap uh, your mirrors and exhaust clamps and rear swing arm. Yeah. 
moving on to the next part sprue. We have the radiator, fan shroud, uh, the headlight bucket, uh, crankcase covers, oil case covers, uh, sorry, timing chain cover. Uh, I may have some of these parts wrong, just uh, just thinking here. Uh, then we have your turn signals all on that sprue. Nicely detailed, as always. And moving on to our last parts bag. And we have in the last bag here, there's your windshield and your headlight bezel covers and your turn signals and your rear brake cover. Don't see any problems with that at all either. Um, I'm not sure why we have another chain and sprocket here, but as you can see the front discs uh, are absolutely wonderful. You want to bring them to the next level. Bring out your uh, hand drill and you can actually drill out every one of those holes if you uh, want to take the time and make it look, uh, bring it to the next level. Once again, you know, great to me a kit. Another part of the exhaust system. Uh, the stand, uh, carburetors, uh, front and rear wheel, and the engine itself. Once again, great to me a kit. I hope you enjoyed watching this review, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have a great day.